this is the Dirk Pinkerton Razorback. Uh, this is a custom knife made by Dirk Pinkerton that's on loan uh, to him from me. Uh, though I think in the next month or two, I might make this mine. Uh, this thing is beautiful. Now, you know, I talk about Dirk Pinkerton a lot here. Um, he does have a lot of uh, folding designs out in the market. Concept, Kaiser, and uh, other companies beyond EDC. Um, but he also hand makes custom knives and they are exquisite. He's very um, well respected amongst his peers for his amazing grinding capability. And uh, so he reached out to me after watching one of my recent Bowie videos. He's like, oh, you're in a Bowie phase. Check out this one I'm making. Do you wanna, do you wanna check it out? I said, yes. Um, now to me, this is, looks less like a Bowie than it does like a Jambaya. This, this reminds me of sort of a Middle Eastern style blade, that double-edged upswept blade. But that upsweep is also, you know, can, can be a, uh, a Bowie. You can consider this a clip starting here. So it's a very extreme long clip point. Um, but to me, it's just a beautiful fighting knife. Uh, perfectly balanced. It feels so good in hand. Um, balanced right around here, right around the first finger, um, so that it is light and lively in hand. Um, and just really, I love this knife because it is such a work of um, just really, really well done hand ground, hollow grinding that comes to an edge that is so sharp um, and so thin behind the edge, you can barely see the cutting edge. Uh, this thing slices like mad. This backside is not sharpened, but as you can see, it is set up for being sharpened, uh, which when slash if I end up buying this knife from him, uh, I will have double edged for me. Now, Dave of This Old Sword Blade Reviews just recently got one of these and he had Dirk expand uh, this flat uh, to about here and then has another row of jimping up there so you can uh, come up here with that Filipino grip. Um, I do like that. Um, this gives you a lot more cutting edge, but uh, I do like the way Dave has his setup. Check that out. It is beautiful. This is some uh, a blade design that is very scalable. This handle is somewhat neutral and extremely comfortable in uh, both of those grips. And then if you want to bring it in like this, it's, it's just fine. Uh, but here in a saber grip, no doubt if you had it set up for a, a uh, you know, if you had this expanded, it would be great in this grip, really excellent in the reverse grip. Um, so uh, what I was starting to say is this design is scalable. I think Dave's is larger, it's broader, and maybe a little bit longer. You could definitely shorten it. You could uh, bring these scales in, make it thinner uh, for, for uh, more discreet carry. This one is an LMAX. Man, this knife is really sweet. And uh, per the other Pinkerton knives I've experienced, he's got great skills with the Kydex. This is an awesome sheath. He's got these uh, close rivets here for the different discrete carry concepts, style clips, um, but also spaced at an inch and a half for the um, tech lock, if that's your thing. Uh, let me show it with a couple of other cool knives. Here it is with this my uh, one handmade Dirk Pinkerton knife. This is the Cave Bear, just a, a built for speed sort of Pical style double edge. Um, Dirk has a real thing for uh, ethnographic blades and bringing ethnographic blades into the modern um, uh, realm, uh, especially, or I shouldn't say modern realm, but into the Western modern knife realm. Uh, like a lot of, like I mentioned, a lot of Middle Eastern style blades he does. And um, this one to me, uh, well, this is of his own making and design, but it reminds me sort of of that Middle Eastern style blade with the curved double edge uh, dagger kind of thing. I do love it. And I love these happy Ronald McDonald uh, micarta handles on this knife. It's such a nice contrast. You got this happy, cheerful handle with this dark, gnarly blade very nicely perfectly ground here uh, dirk pinkerton has some serious serious chops um 
Also a great sheath. I like these sort of protection panels, just in case you have, uh, I wear this, carry this in the waistband. And if you have, if you have a spare tire, these will kind of help you and guard, guard your spare tire from that tip. Um, but just really nicely done. I think I need, uh, or I think I would like to expand my handmade uh, custom Dirk Pinkerton knives uh, collection. I have one. Uh, I do have some of the uh, folders that he's done, the Main Street and the Inversion, which is cool. And now he's coming out uh, with a his uh, an Inversion, not under the Kaiser banner, but under his own banner. And it's going to have some refinements that the Kaiser knife did not have. You should check out the video I did on that. Uh, but it's going to have a removable ring on it. So you have a, let me get mine out so I can show you what I mean. You have a knife like this. It doesn't have the, uh, the terraced milling. It's nicely contoured. Uh, but it basically looks just like this. But he's added a ring that comes off here uh, that you can a titanium ring that you can use to to shore up your grip or to or to draw the knife uh or if you don't like that or aren't in the mood you can remove it and have it look like this so dirk pinkerton um not only making beautiful stuff but innovative stuff this knife by the way the inversion is just awesome not just a uh scary looking pakal knife but a really excellent utility knife this thing is a that's one thing he accelerates at uh, Dirk Pinkerton in his folder designs is making things that are very utilitarian but that will also uh you know be tactical in a pinch this for sure uh the contact by by uh beyond EDC is the same way big fan of his knives and big fan of the man you should check out uh I have two interviews with him on the Knife Junkie uh, podcast. Um, so check him out. He's a very interesting dude. Uh, before I wrap this up, let me show you how sharp this thing is. Now, I don't Oh, Actually, before I get to the sharpness, I'll, I'll show it as comparison with two medium tactical knives that are very common. Uh, here it is with the Cold Steel Coban. So a little bit bigger than the Coban. And here it is with the Spyderco Street Bowie. Also, well, yeah considerably larger i've been throwing this no spin throwing into my target and it does really well you just got to whip it because it's not that heavy all right so let me show you this sharpness now just really 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 sharp but say you were fighting with it and you're and you're hitting you're doing percussive kind of and slashing and yeah you this would be awesome at slashing but check this out turn it over and use that side just get these nasty tears it's not even sharp and it's see that's the power of a back cut on a clip point or an upswept is that you do this you flick it back to an incoming hand or wrist and you can just do nasty nasty damage with an unsharpened portion of the blade. So I guess in that regard, when uh, Dirk reached out and said, you're into clip points, you're into Bowie blades, you, you might want to check this out. This has a nasty back cut. So what an awesome knife. By the way, uh, very comfortable handle, beautiful, beautiful quality uh, micarta here, uh, as is on the other one that I have. And there's his maker's mark, DP. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching.